favorites video. I didn't do a favorites video for quite some time, so I'm going to share in this one what I have found from the end of spring to the beginning of summer. It's going to be mainly books, old books, small things from my brocanteur and another brocant I found here in Saint Etienne. Uh, so I'm going to share that with you. Not massive big things, it's mainly books, but I will have other things coming in, in August because I plan to go to other Vaucon to find funny things. So you're going to see that. And I also have a great book from a normal bookshop, but I think you would be also interested in this one if you don't know it. My first book from a regular bookshop, normal bookshop, is this one. Um, it's The Color of Red, History of a Color, The Color of Red by Michel Pastoreau. So this one is in the French version, it's a French historian, but they are all available in English. Um, he has studied colors for a long time. It's a specialist historian of colors and of medieval history, medieval art. It's super interesting. I have always seen his books in bookshops, in the art section, and always thought I would have to read them. They should probably be, be very, very interested, very, very interesting, and I never did that. So this time I thought I'm going to grab the paperback version. They exist also in beautiful um, hard, hardcover version. You can find them online in English. They are all translated. And he has published so far, I think, five colors, and the yellow color is coming this fall also in English. And I've seen in English, the English uh, version is super pretty too. So if you are an artist, if you are interested in art, in colors in general, this is everything from a European point of view or history point of view. It's not read in everywhere, in every culture in the world, but it's through the lens of art, of religion, of clothing, everything. It's, I'm just at the beginning. It's going to be one of my summer reading this summer. And it's fantastic. So I would really recommend this uh, series if you didn't read it so far. Maybe you are familiar with that. And then I have also been in my old bookshop. So I found fantastic books in the old bookshop as always. I never, I'm never disappointed when I go there. So I'm going to share a few of them. The first one is this one and I had to grab it. It's La Mère Michel et son chat. It's a fantastic little book. It's, it has been written after a rhyme, a French rhyme, which is super, super, super popular. Everybody would know it. I will link under the video, the, a video of the song, if you want to, if you are just curious to hear what this song is all about. It's about a lady who has lost her cat and she's trying to find it. Um, she thinks somebody has taken it. And it has been written, I think, at the beginning of the 18th century. And this book has been written at the beginning of the 19th century by a translator, a very serious writer actually, but he also wrote a few books for children and he created this story after the song really, taking the characters of the song, the cat, La Mère Michel, the lady, the main character, and he has sort of created a story around all that. And it was a very, very good story. It's about a cat who has all sort of unhappy adventures. Fortunately, it's going to end really well for him. Uh, and the drawings were really, really cute and adorable and really funny, a bit, a bit comic, a bit uh, hilarious. It's, it's not a serious book, but um, I, I needed to have that. Of course, I have my cat. I'm always interested in cat books, so I need to have this one also in my collection. I will put him definitely next to my Gobolino book, uh, the story of the cat. Uh, the witch cat. This one, there is no witches in this one. It's, um, there is a marquise, it's taken place in Paris, so there are a lot of descriptions of Paris too, which are funny. Uh, yes, it, it's just a funny, funny book I found, so I had to have it in my collection. The next book I found is this tiny book by Scarron, Le Roman Comic. So it's just an abridged version. Uh, Scarron was the husband of Madame de Maintenon. If you are familiar with French history, she married Louis XIV, the king, in the 17th century. Um, this was her first husband, who was a disabled man. He was very interesting and a very special writer, interesting character. I never read his books, honestly, I'm going to confess. Uh, this one was just like a, a tiny little version of his, uh, a friend, uh, the famous of his novel, Le Roman Comique, comical novel. So. I'm going to read that. It's just not a very big book and I love the format. It's just a fun, little, tiny, adorable book. Another book I found, this one I found it after listening to a radio program about Balzac. So Balzac, the French writer, it was a, a program, a radio program about his house in Paris that you can visit. 
Um, this book is Le Cousin, Le Cousin Ponce. You can find him in all the classics, Penguin classics of that, Le Cousin Ponce. Um, it's part of this big, big, big series of novels called La Comédie Humaine. And I was interested to read that because there is a brocanteur inside. So obviously this series of videos I'm doing, the favorites video, is mainly about old books and brocanteur and a few other things. Uh, and this one, there is a brocanteur inside. I don't know the story at all. I'm going to read that. It's part of my summer readings too. Uh, but I'm excited to, to know what it's all about. So I was happy to find this one. also found this beautiful one, which is Alphonse Daudet, Qu'on Choisi pour la Jeunesse. I also uh, had a radio program about him. So I wanted, I, it's the sort of books we study usually when we are about 10, 12 years old at school. And uh, we usually study one or two of his uh, novels or tales who were written, which were written at the end of the 19th century, but I was interested to, to read that. It's a beautiful book and uh, it's really not only for children, so I was interested to uh, learn and to reread some I already knew um, with others. And the drawings are also really pretty. And the last one of this series, before showing you my big fairy tale book I found, which is the big piece I found in uh, the end of April, beginning of May. But the last one was this one, which is also available in English. I was just intrigued by the title. I don't read a lot of philosophy, to tell the truth. Uh, but from time to time, if it's not too complicated to understand all that, I'm always happy to read that. This one is about imagination. It's a series about imagination. Uh, in French, it's Les Relaisons. In English, it's Air and Dreams. I will also link that. I have no idea if it's... Uh, the title was really, really pretty and I was interested to read at least one. He has written four in this series. Um, there is Water and Dreams. There is, yes, a big series about that. So it's, I'm always interested to, to know more and to learn more about imagination. So was interested to find that randomly in the old bookshop. And the very funny one I found, I think it was at the end of May, is this one. So it's a very big format, pretty big. You can see compared to my hand and it's cool. So it's Les Contes de Perrault, but it's a special one, this one. It's what happens to the characters after the fairy tale. What happened after that? Once the fairy tale ends, uh, there is a, I think it's a person who worked for a journal, a, a little sort of funny journal at the end of the 19th century. So he imagined, he imagined what happened to Little Red Riding Hood, her mother, uh, there is, who else? Cinderella. It's, it's supposed to be a bit funny and it's not super funny. I think the sense of humor has changed a bit. So some of the things I thought was not, were not very, very funny. You can tell it was supposed to be, but it's not very funny. But the drawings I thought were, the illustrations were really, really fantastic. I, thought, I think they're all really, really pretty and really good. So here you have this title I thought was great. La Belle, instead of Sleeping Beauty, La Belle au Bois, Veillant, La Belle au Bois Dormant, so it's the, the following story is La Belle au Bois Veillant, the um, awakening beauty, maybe we can translate that. Uh, so it's, yes, it was really fantastic. She's reading books because she was really silly. He imagined that she was really silly because she has not done, hasn't done anything for 100 years. So how could she keep her husband if she has nothing to tell, no stories to tell, all that. So she's going to try to improve herself reading a lot of books. So yes, it's here with Cinderella in her, uh, with her husband. What happened to her with her husband, all that. This one was really, really great. I thought this drawing. And this one is Barbe Bleu. So. The widow, what happened to her? This one was also super pretty, I thought. And there are a lot of little ornaments on the text, which are fantastic too. So I'm really happy about the book. The text is not that good, but the, all the illustrations are really, really good. So I was happy to have found this one for my fairy tales collection. So I'm going to be really careful with this beautiful big book. I have also discovered that in my city there is a brocante actually which takes place once a month and it, it happened yesterday, Saturday morning, so I went there for the first time. There are supposed to be about 40 seller, 50 sellers I think and I think when I went there there were probably not more than 20 so I will continue to go there to see what really great things they, they have. There were interesting things but uh, I only found a few little things really which were interesting for me but I will definitely go back there every month because it's super easy. I don't have my driving license, I don't drive so it's convenient to have things which happen 
very close, very locally. So in the Brocon, that's what I found. Not many, many things yesterday. I found this frame. I'm going probably to remove the this lady because I, I'm going to gather a lot of frames. Both for my kitchen, my studio, I want to collect and to have all my favorite writers, illustrators, all that around me. So I wanted to, uh, to gather a lot of frames. So I like old ones, of course. This one has been painted. It's not the original color, but it was nice. And there is, yes, it's only old ones, but I'm not going to keep this lady. I also found this one. I thought it was really delicate decor. So I'm going also to change the photo and I'm going to keep this um, wedding photo, which is really strange, by the way. I, I was looking at it very carefully and this seems, you, you try to imagine what was the life of all these people. They are all dead probably now, but they seem there were some disabled persons who seem, they seem to have a dark story between, behind some of these characters. So I was interested to, to look at it carefully, but I'm going to remove it and put something else inside. So that's what I found in the brocante. And I also found this book, which is funny. It's called Le Magasin Pittoresque, and it's all sort of things about everything. I suppose people were subscribed to that and they would receive that every month or every week, every month probably. And it's about natural things. You have to hear about foxes, um, characters. At least I have it for, I had it for five euros, so I thought it was just great. Musicians, history of famous people, behaviors. Some sort of internet in paper, actually, I suppose, like a Wikipedia in paper, maybe. Uh, but it's, it's interesting. I'm really happy about, about this little one, Le Magasin Pittoresque. You may also have seen my trumpet in some past videos, but I didn't share it in my favorite videos. I found it in April in my brocanteur. Um, and I was super happy about it. It's just a piece of decor. It doesn't work, anything like that. But just pretty, rusty, um, just perfect for a piece of decor. And I found it, I think, for 10 euros. So really, just perfect fine. The very last thing I found in my brocanteur, the last time I went there, were, were these random little things. They are supposed, I think, to support some shelf, but I will see how I use them. I have two of them. One is a bit broken, so we'll see. I will see what I do with them. I think you can always find something to do with these sort of things. Thank you very much for watching this favorite video. Let me know if you plan to go to a lot of brocon this summer or garage sales or flea markets or these sort of things. Well, I plan to go to others. I will share what I found later this summer um, for my home and all these things. I will share that in another favorite video. Um, I also have some videos coming about my deco, my home projects. If you, ha if you are subscribed to my main newsletter, uh, you have seen I've shared some of my projects both in my artwork, the things I want to do, of course, for my work, my workshops or that, but also for my home and my small or bigger personal projects, summer projects. So um, let me know what are yours, what, uh, what you want to do this summer. Uh, both for your home, uh, these sort of things. I'm going to share that in the upcoming videos. I have a lot to, th to share on this topic very soon. So that's it. Um, I have a lot of readings this summer. I'm really excited to read all these wonderful books. Let me know if you were familiar with the Colors uh, series. I would be really interested to know if you were familiar with this one. I think it's a very, very interesting one and precious one to have if you are an artist or if you are interested in art in general. For now, I'm going to go back to my Cinderella series because I'm working on a new series of pieces, characters inspired by Cinderella. I will not follow the, the end of the story imagine, but in my book it's going to be the classical version. So you're going to see that also in upcoming vlogs. And for now, I will leave you here. Wish you a beautiful Sunday, beautiful holiday, beautiful summer, and I will see you very soon. You can give a thumbs up if you like what you saw, and you can subscribe if you don't want to miss all my upcoming videos. Thank you very much.